Good evening, everyone. That was night week. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call the uh, regular meeting of Sumter County Council for Tuesday, August the 24th, to order. Ms. V, would you please give us an invitation and may we all stand and please remain standing for the pledge. Let us pray. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we do thank you for bringing this council together to continue the work that you've placed before us. We ask your presence, you invite your presence to be with us as we conduct this business. We ask you to bless everyone under the sound of my voice. We ask you to bless all of our work, law enforcement officers, especially those who are working in danger. We ask you to be over our men and women in our military services and just be with them over in Afghanistan, Father. You see and you know and you love and you care. Just be with them and help them to make good decisions to take care of the people. We ask your blessings upon those who have lost loved ones in the COVID-19 and in the, the variant. Those, and we ask your blessings upon the school children as they have returned to school. Just protect them and make uh, the sickness minimal. We know that there's going to be some sickness. Uh, we don't have the same mind that you have, but we know that we, you love us and you care. And, and as we go through our meeting, we ask that you help us to have kind hearts and to consider everything with wisdom and understanding. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. You have blessed us even in this pandemic. And we ask that you help us to be good stewards of your blessing. These are our blessings we thank and ask you in the matchless name of your Son and our Savior. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Mary to read the Bible while I come down and get the award after you. Retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Roger Greenwald served our country in both Vietnam and Southwest Asia as a Fighter pilot with more than 2,000 flying hours and 24 years of active duty military service, and his last duty assignment was Shaw Air Force Base. After retirement, he decided to make Sumter his home, so he went on to teach junior ROTC at Sumter High School for 15 years, which allowed him to wear the uniform for a total of 43 years. He is a past commander and current member of the American Legion Post 15. He is married to Katie, and they have two children and five beautiful granddaughters. He currently lives in Sumter County Council District 2. Thank you for your service. First, I want to thank everybody, and I thank you all for giving me the opportunity to come down this and represent the millions and millions of Americans who have served their country to preserve this freedom that we enjoy today. And for 43 years, I raised my hand and every day would recite the pledge. And so it is indeed an honor for me to do that again this evening. So I'll ask everybody to please rise and join with me as we pledge our allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Landing, are there any changes to the agenda? No, sir, there are no changes. Move approval again. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Berg, seconded by 
this evening that we approve the agenda and the discussion. Hearing one, all in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. 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 All opposed. I have a motion to approve the minutes from our regular meeting for Tuesday, August the 10th. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Baker, seconded by Mr. Baker. In the discussion, <coughs> hearing one, all in favor of approving our minutes from our meeting of Tuesday, August 10th, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, the minutes are approved. Land use matters, rezoning request number 2114, Ms. Rubman. And then I say prior to uh, council taking action on these next two, uh, the first one is a rezoning request and the next one is an ordinance amendment. We will have a public hearing prior to the vote. Good evening, Helen Rubin for planning staff. RZ2114 is at 614 Fluoride Street. The uh, applicant is Mr. Jay Davis as the authorized agent. This is a request to rezone approximately six tenths of an acre from residential mine to light industrial warehouse. The property actually abuts uh, Sumter Utilities property, which is zoned light industrial warehouse. The Sumter Utilities site is a grandfather non-conforming site with respect to setbacks. This property uh, is being sought to be rezoned as part of an acquisition of Sumter Utilities to add to their property to deal with some of their non-conformity issues um, in addition to securing access along a right way that runs to Fluoride Street. Uh, the property is currently undeveloped. If there was a house on it, it's been removed, um, and it does abut next to a stormwater management area that Sumter Utilities has. There is a change of grade where the Sumter Utilities property is slightly higher, so this site does receive water from the Sumter Utilities site. It is in the suburban development planning area, and this planning area, our primary goal is to scrutinize and manage the existing development patterns where we see an intentional mix of uses where new commercial and industrial locations um, are permitted, but we focus on form and design. In this case, the request would be to add to an existing non-conforming site to bring it into better conformance with our development standards. As I said, it is going to be added to the Central Utility site. It is immediately near the intersection of Jefferson Road and Fluoride Street. Um, although part of this property is uh, residentially zoned and it's on a residential street, the south side of Fluoride Street is not currently developed with any habitable houses. This is how the property looks today. It is wooded and grassed. Um, there's the central utility site you see in the background. That little bit of water that you see is actually from the central utility site. So you see there's approximately a two to three foot change in grade from this property to the central utilities property. This is a house immediately next door. It's actually an uninhabited structure at this time. Uh, Planning Commission does recommend approval of this request. Uh, the applicant intends to combine this property with the central utilities property to resolve some non-conformities. Um, and we find that generally the encroachment of this uh, industrial zoning into this neighborhood area will have minimal impact. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Ms. Rubin? Okay, I now declare the public hearing for RZ 2114 to be open. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this rezoning request, please proceed to the microphone. Recognize Mr. Jay Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of council. Um, Ellen did a great job. We're just trying to kind of clean some property lines up. If you see that lot, it just intrudes as a point up into this property. Their business has been very good, and so they're just trying to make room and bring it into better conformity. Question. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Anyone else? I now declare a public hearing closed. Move to approve this. Sorry. We have a motion by Ms. McGain and a second by Mr. Baker. Any questions? Any discussion? All in favor of second reading, RZ2114, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, RZ2114, second reading is approved. Ordinance amendment number 2104. Ms. Rubin. OA 2104 relates to minimum setback requirements for communication towers and antenna in residential zoning districts. This applicant is actually being brought forward by planning staff. 
It would have specifically amended Article 5, Section 5B10A and Article 5, Section 5DF to allow engineered fall zones for communication towers and antenna and residential zoning districts and to correct some duplicative and conflicting provisions within this section of the ordinance related to communication towers. We've initiated this amendment out of a special exception approval that happened on St. Paul's Church Road. There's an existing non-conforming tower in a general residential zoning district that actually carries both communications information for the general public but as well as first responder communications. The amount of property that they owned or had leased to is not sufficient for the tower to meet the full setback based on the height of the tower, but it is sufficient for them to design a tower with an engineered fall zone that would fall within the amount of space that they have. Unfortunately, in our residential districts, that's not an option right now. So after working with the planning staff, we decided that it would be appropriate to bring forward this request. It does have application outside of this particular location. As you know, most people don't have home phones anymore, so they have cellular communications. So the need for cellular towers is increasing across the community to address in-signal or in-structure coverage and other things in our residential zoning districts. The size and scale of towers necessary are much smaller than out in more rural areas. Currently, the ordinance does allow engineered fall zones to be used for cellular towers in our commercial districts, but it's simply not an option even by special exception residential districts. So that's where this request is coming from. In particular, the language that you see in yellow on the screen would be added to the ordinance. It would basically allow an engineered fall zone or the non-residential setback of the zoning district, whichever is greater, to be the required setback for any communications tower that meets the design criteria for an engineered fall zone. That fall zone would be certified by a South Carolina licensed engineer. This applies to a very specific type of tower. Certain types of designs won't have an engineered fall zone. It is possible that they would fall completely over. So in these areas, it would be the steel monopole, very more sleek designs than you would see with a lattice-style tower. Also, we would be striking this entire section that you see on this screen. It provides some conflict because in one section of the tower regulations, it says you can't go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to get variances, and then one section says that you can. And then we tried to reconcile those words and language. It was very duplicative and conflicting. When we add this engineered fall zone language into the ordinance, we believe this will actually address many of the issues that I think this section was trying to handle. Overall, Planning Commission and planning staff do recommend approval of this request. We think it will allow additional flexibility in citing and locating cellular communications towers within the county, and it also removes duplicative and confusing language from the regulations. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions of the room? As before, the public hearing for ordinance amendment number 2104 is now open. Anyone wishing to speak to counsel either for or against this ordinance amendment, please proceed to the podium. Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. We have a motion by Mr. Edens and a second by Ms. McGinty to approve second reading on ordinance amendment number 2104. Any discussion? Anyone? All in favor of approving ordinance amendment 2104, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Under new business, ordinance number 21959, Mr. Bryant. Mr. Chairman, this is Council Ordinance 21959, first reading on an approval to issue and sell a special source revenue bond that would allow us to consolidate three existing loans and refinance those that are more interest-free. And this ordinance would approve the consolidation and issuance of the bond that would not require that we done. I gave a brief presentation on this earlier this afternoon. What we'll be looking at in the final analysis is whether the bond would allow us to amortize the debt and continue to pay the expenses of the systems with the existing revenue. We may take any questions at this time. Any questions of the room? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Thank you. 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 Thank you
questions of Mr. Bryant.
in the past 260 days, dating back to December 8, 2020. The source of this material is the Sumter Item Obituary. So approximately every 40 hours, a military veteran in Sumter County passed away and died. Uh, also, I looked at the number of veterans that are committing suicide, and my latest report is that it's an estimate that more than 20 veterans die by suicide every day. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, Councilman Baker asked me how many uh, veteran, Vietnam veterans have passed away. And I went back to look at the record, and, and when it indicated in the obituary that they served in Vietnam, I made a notation of that. And I counted 26 of the 120, uh, 143, 26 actually indicated in the obituary that they served in Vietnam. But that can be very misleading because there are a lot of other veterans that served in other countries that contracted illnesses from Agent Orange. And I am one of those veterans. I did not serve in Vietnam, but I served in Thailand during the Vietnam era. And at my base in Thailand, non Phnom, NKP, they were spraying Agent Orange around the base. And many other people on the base, including I, contracted illnesses related to Agent Orange. Uh, systemic heart disease, prostate cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, and so forth. And uh, as a result of that, many of those veterans have died, as well as many of them are on disability. I, I've been rated 100% disabled as a result of my illnesses from Agent Orange. So I just want to make that aware that uh, veterans are, are still here and uh, many of them are dying every other day. Also, I just want to bring something up too that really got to my heart and, and uh, I guess Mr. Chairman, when you and I were at a breakfast this morning together, one of the members brought up the fact that a lady by the name of Miss Ann August, uh, who used to be the executive director of the San Clemente Regional Transportation Authority here in Sumter, that she passed away from COVID-19. And her husband had also contracted it, so we don't know what his status is. But that really touched my heart because Miss August was very well known in the Sumter community and for the services as she did in running a highly proficient agency with the San Clemente Regional Council of Transportation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Anyone else? Monthly reports, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, the um, planning Planning committee. The planning commission will meet on tomorrow. In case the council members are interested in uh, participating or at least attending, I should say. Also, the, there is the building department activity report, and there will be an unveiling of um, the roads crossroads sign in the Maysville community on Friday, August the 27th at 5 o'clock if anyone is interested in attending. And um, you all may know these two guys, but there will be a um, community update and that will be held on September the 21st. At Shaw, catch all Shaw Community Center. Also, in your packet is the update on the COVID report, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Landon. 
Mr. Mixon, County Administrative Report. Mr. Chair, no report this evening other than to apologize to Councilman Baker for using his high school picture. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do want to, although the County Administrator did not have a report for us, they've been, as you know, doing a lot of work behind the scenes because they brought us a good packet today for the American Rescue Plan. But in particular, I want to thank staff for looking out for community groups and church groups as they said they would and putting a pot of money in place for them to participate and continue with the very necessary and critical projects that they are involved in. And so the public can stay tuned and staff will put out the criteria and process for that. But I just thought that was very thoughtful of staff to do that and have it in place for us as a priority item today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes my comments. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Come now to the public comment portion of our agenda. Any citizens desiring to speak to council limited to no more than three minutes, please make your comments to the chairman. Anyone wishing to speak to council, please proceed to the podium and state your name for the record, please. Good evening. My name is William Jones and I am a business owner out by Shaw Air Force Base, the plaza across from Shaw Air Force Base. I just wanted to make note that I listened to you all and I'm, excuse me, I apologize. I'm very pleased to hear all the different things that are happening in Sunday County. Please excuse my attire. I was, I didn't know the meeting was today. But I wanted to be here because there's a great issue. Shaw Air Force Base, you know, for the past 20 years, we've been providing service to our veterans out there at this plaza and also with respect to aiding them with their coping with being back into, you know, being back into mixed company here. Our company is very well noted here at Shaw for doing great things. We introduced the comedy club out there, right? We are no part of anything that's been happening out there that's been derogatory in any way. We've been in business there for 20 years, never to have an issue. Always putting things in proper perspective, putting things correctly. And what we've been trying to do is to better Sumter County, working together to do this. Because of certain things that has happened in this county, different things that we've experienced as far as the murders and different things, I think they've grouped selective individuals into this party to say that they're not going to allow for us to have casual drinking privileges out there as far as with the liquor license, which as you know, a cocktail is kind of customary in a comedy club. We have linked up with Comedy Zone International. I'm sorry, that's them actually calling me. I apologize. I'm just calling them. I'm going to come to this meeting. I apologize. But anyway, the point is that we're trying to do good things here in an effective and great way. And we're asking for the county support, you know, to be able to bring these things in, that we are no part of anything derogatory in any way, shape, or form. And none of the things, because the sheriff department stood against us, you know, for the liquor license, right? These things here hurt new businesses that are coming into Sumter County to bring great things. If there's a problem with people that are doing wrong things, let's address that and help change those things. Let's not stop good people from doing good things. We're trying to do something and we're across from the base and we listen to them as far as the things that they'd like to have so they don't have to leave and go to Atlanta, but they don't have to leave and go to Columbia. The closest comedy club is Columbia and we were a part of that franchise. So we brought that here to Sumter, Sumter's first real comedy club. And we brought that here. 
And we don't want to be stopped from doing good things in this town and bringing good businesses in. I'm well vested in this town, very well vested. You know what I mean? And the thing is this, you know, I'm trying to do good things and I need the support of the county council to help me to bring these things to Shaw and to Sumter. And I'm opening myself up for anyone who would like to meet with me and discuss it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Appreciate that. Anyone else wishing to address council? Please state your names for the record. Sabrina Belcher. I'm sorry, Sabrina. Sabrina Belcher. Belcher. Yeah, I'm Belcher. Where I am. How y'all doing? Okay. Um, my name is Sabrina Belcher. I am standing here today along with team members of Sumter's own nonprofit organization, Make Sisters United, to issue and as well as ask for an immediate call to action on an issue of safety to our children. Many of us here are parents, some working, some stay at home parents. That doesn't make the job any less difficult. Today I'm here to talk about how I spoke to uh, fellow constituents, community members. We also have an online petition right now about their fears for the lives of their children that have to be in school daily or for face-to-face -face instruction or be considered truant during a fatal pandemic. We bring this to your attention today because Therein, you all are our elected officials, and we expect and are awaiting action from you for the emergency relief. No child should be forced into in-person instruction as, at such a trying time. No parent should be pushed into making a decision for their child that could endanger their lives. The goal of sending children to school is to educate them safely and adequately, to inspire them to push past any obstacle that they face with perseverance, and break barriers to become the next future great doctors, lawyers, teachers, whatever it is they choose to be. Councilmen, councilwomen, um, you know, that entire goal is being reversed when we place them in the direct line of fire daily by sending them to schools with positive COVID cases. So now let me break down the latest numbers to identify the seriousness of our claim. So the school district alone at multiple schools, multiple bus routes throughout the county have a total of 1,347 positive children and teen cases that have been current students. We also have a 134 employee COVID cases um, throughout Sumter School District. These numbers have been counted since school started on August 17th, 2021. It is only August 24th, 2021. So as I have given the facts on this request for immediate school closure we are also requiring that the motion be submitted for this county council office to our local governor's desk, and we're asking that you make a motion to have him declare a state of emergency in South Carolina and give our children a much more safer virtual education. But also in the request, we on the, if anyone wants to meet with us afterwards, we sign the petition. In that request, we have a clause for children that are IEP students, special needs students, that they be offered um, and face to face instruction only if absolutely necessary. But this is, can cause deaths to our children. It seems like it's not as serious as it should be taken. And people are dying from this virus every single day. They shouldn't be in school. It's just that simple. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Anybody else wishing to speak to council? Yes, how y'all doing? Uh, I'm Brittany Martin, the founder of Big Sisters United. Uh, I'm going to speak briefly on uh, Mr. Williams, uh, who is it? Mr. Jones, <laughs> Mr. Jones uh, situation as well as the situation with the kids and the COVID crisis that's going on. I'm going to start off with uh, Mr. Jones situation first. Um, I myself, I have been to this club, the comedy club, and it is nice. It is a nice setting. It's a classic setting. Um, me personally, I'm not. I don't like to party much at all. So when I do go out, I like to just have good, clean fun, and that is exactly what his establishment provides. Um, and yes, if I when I go, I would like to have me a glass of wine if I choose to. So I don't understand um, why he is being denied a, li a liquor license. So I'm here to definitely support him on that. 
not on the case as far as our children. I mean, me, myself, I'm a parent who has buried a child, okay? So I buried a child 12 years ago. I know the loss. I know that pain, and I know that feeling of losing your child. So for me going through that years ago as a young girl, that lets me cling on to my children just a little bit harder. It makes me love them a little bit more. It makes me protect them a little bit more. You know what I mean? And so with that being said, parents here, the reason I'm coming because my children, they don't even, we don't even do the Sumter School District learning. I mean, I've been online. My children have been online for three years now, way before the pandemic, because of a personal choice that I chose. It's a lot of corruption in adults, a lot of corruption in children, school shootings, things of that nature. I said, no, my baby's going to stay home like a teacher. And we're working out just fine. A lot of parents feel that they don't have that option here. After speaking with some parents today, they really feel that they are forced to send their kids to school. And if they do not send them to school, they will experience things like the truancy officers, DHS getting involved. And that's just ridiculous. It shouldn't be, it should never go to that point, especially when we are facing a deadly pandemic. You know, uh, death versus a failing child, I'll take a failing child any day over having to have this uh, conversation of burying my child. You know, so I just think as leaders, as, uh, you know, leaders in this community, I feel that y'all y'all can really stand up a little bit harder on top of the school board. And, you know, we really need to push for this online learning. I mean, just until we get through this pandemic, just until we all see what's going going on. None of us know what's going on. And my sister here, she gave me some numbers on the Sumter County report. I have a number on the DHEC report as well. And it's ridiculous, you know? People are dying. We are talking about deaths out here. So, I mean, this shouldn't even be a conversation. All of us should protect our children together and come up with a plan together on how we're going to get our kids through this time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Martin. Anyone else? Hearing none, public health folks. One more, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Crystal Ryan. I'm here also um, to speak about the school district. <clears throat> my child went to Cherryville Elementary. The first day, they were already calling parents about the COVID issue. The first day, then when I asked her, she's like, they're not making the kids skip a seat when they're in the cafeteria. They're sitting right next to each other. They're not closing the schools down, which I don't understand why, because if you have a positive case in the school, you have to close the school down to properly sanitize it so that none of the other kids will get affected. Now, here we go the second week, and there's more schools, more calls out to parents about cases that are coming up. Why have the school district closed down the school for the safety of our kids? If they're supposed to be our future, we have to give them a reason to look forward to the future. Instead of sitting here acting like it's not a big deal. Acting like, okay, just this one class needs a quarantine and the other rest of the school is fine. When this child clearly went from the cafeteria to the bathroom, to his classroom, down the hallway, the office, this child has traveled through the whole entire school. So there is no way that we cannot close down these schools to properly sanitize these buildings so that none of our kids will get infected by this virus. It's coming around serious this time, and it's not affecting us grown people, it's affecting our kids. And I, mine, for me personally, are not going back to school. Call it truancy, call it what you want, but until the schools are sanitized properly and correctly, mine will be staying at home. Y'all do what y'all want to me personally, but my safety and my reasons are for my kids. They are my future, and your kids, your grandkids should be your future. So we have to give them something to look forward to instead of keeping them inside these infected buildings, because that's what it is, infected by COVID. And 
Anyone else? Seeing that public comment is closed, Mr. Adjournment. Second. May I move by Mr. Baker, second by Mr. Berg. If adjourned, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye